Hey guys, welcome to Easter Online at Living Waters. We're gonna have an amazing service for you today on Easter Sunday. And it's just a privilege for us to be able to be in your home today. So we're gonna have a time of worship. We're gonna have an amazing message with Pastor Sid today. We just want you to connect. Before we do that, I just wanna encourage you guys today because we are just living in a crazy time right now, which is really hard on everybody. And I wanna encourage you because I was thinking today before you know, we started filming, I was like, you know, God, You've encouraged me so much through so much in my life. And now we're kind of in this thing all together. And I thought, you know, what scripture was it that God that you gave to me when I really reached out, like when I really needed you in my darkest, you know, hour. And here we are on Resurrection Sunday. And it was like God saying, remember, I spoke to you. And he gave me this Psalm and it was just so amazing. And it was Psalm 121.1. And it says, my help comes from the Lord comes from God. That's where my help comes from, the maker of heaven and earth. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never sleep. He doesn't sleep. And I thought that was so encouraging because I'm like, you know, when I go to sleep, God's not sleeping. Whatever's happening in this world, whatever darkness or despair we're going through as people or struggles that we're going through as people, God is always watching us. He's always here with us. And that's encouraging. And so I want to just encourage that. And then it says this, this is so awesome. <laughs> and then he says, the sun will not harm you by day or the moon by night. And so I want to encourage you today that God is watching out for us. And so as you join us today at church online, which is so awesome, I want you to just get your family, get your friends, get your people, come on in here. We're going to have a time of worship right now. So join in with us today. Within the future, my dreams are small compared to yours. Why should I worry about tomorrow when I know that all I gotta do is trust you, Lord? Every little thing's gonna be alright. Every little thing is going to be just fine Whether I can see it now I know you will work it out for good Every little thing, everything will be alright You plan the perfect way for me Why should I dwell upon the roads and certainties When all I gotta do is look to you It's all I gotta do is look to you oh, Every little thing's gonna be Every little thing's gonna be just fine Whether I can see it now I know you will work it out for good Oh, oh, oh. every little thing, everything will be oh Lord, bless 
bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming, in your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, 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 He is for you. children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming 
And you're going, and you're weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you, 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 He is for you. Hey church, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. So good to be with you where we together as a body and a community declare with those around the world on this day that He is risen. And He is risen indeed, amen. The Bible account of Jesus' resurrection is one that declares that he, the tomb was empty. We see that as we look in Matthew 28, and if you have your Bibles open and, you know, or your scriptures in front of you, let's look at uh, Matthew 28, uh, verses 1 through 6, where it says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week, began the dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning, his clothing was white as snow, and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Hallelujah. And so through the resurrected Christ, we too, through salvation, have become resurrected people. Can you say amen to that? You feel resurrected today? Even though we are in the midst of a crisis globally, we can still, through Christ, be resurrected and live a resurrected life. 
And I've come to you today on this special time of the year, the, the greatest time of the year for us as Christians. And even though we're apart, we don't have to be separated. And we can never be separated through Christ who loves us unconditionally. And I want to share with you today that even though we live in these perilous times and through this COVID crisis, the Christ is with us and that we are alive in him. And so I want to share with you a strategy on how we can capture this window of opportunity. I have six points to share with you today. And number one, the way we're going to do this is through prayer, of course, first, and worship. For prayer and worship are the very foundation of our life that lives within us, that lifts us from ourselves onto him. And onto him we are then launched into a world to make a difference. And so number two, we are going to connect. We are going to stay connected through social media with various opportunities. We'll be doing a Sunday service. Wow, and everybody said hallelujah to that, amen? We'll have midweek prayer where we can join together and we can pray to keep our focus, amen, on what it is that God has destined us to be and our purpose here on earth. We have a children's program, which already we have something going right now, and we'll continue to improve on that and continue to bring that for the children. Hallelujah. And we will have a time with the your pastor. You will have a time where I will, as your pastor, will have opportunity to share with you collectively and also privately. We'll have opportunity to share together privately if there's counseling or needs or prayer requests. That'll be made available to you through social media, praise God. And then we have time apt to disciple number three. Discipleship is so important for us that we continue our growth in Christ, amen? A time where we take time for ourselves, as the Bible says, to study to show ourselves approved so that we can continue to be vessels. And we are vessels, even though we are socially distanced, we can be vessels ourselves through our own social media opportunities with close friends and relatives and loved ones where we continue to have the word of God in our mouth proceeding and showing signs that, hey, discipleship is an opportunity to reach others. And so we will grow strong in discipleship. We'll also have opportunity for proclamation, the proclamation of the, of the uh, resurrected Christ through our community, where we'll be having uh, uh, segments where we will be streaming out to the community or you know, casting out to the community so that we can have more than just a, an inside the wall perspective on who we are as a people, who we are as a church, and uh, that give those that really right now that are filled with fear, because the Bible says in these perilous times, uh, people will be fainting from fear, even losing lives. People right now are desperate as they are being separated, as they're losing their income. And uh, we praise God that, that we will have this opportunity to really reach our community. We'll also be using social media in opportunities where we can serve, where we can serve others, where we can get out beyond the walls. And we'll have segments in how and, uh, you know, uh, how we're going to do this, the way we're going to uh, do this, uh, being a servant to our community. And number six, giving. Giving is a way, of, first of all, of staying close to Christ. And we know that in our giving to God, it's for the purpose of reaching the lost and reaching the community. And we all know that we need resources if we are going to reach our community, if we're going to touch the lives of others, there has to be resources, there has to be uh, funds for us to develop and to continue developing programs and outreaches that we can do through social media. And so praise God. These, these are the six points. I've just given them to you briefly, but we'll be going through them in more detail as the weeks ahead, you know, um, when we continue with this. And so I just want you to, you know, kind of write those six points down because you are an integral part of this. I thank God for the team that's around me. I thank God for you that are praying for me every day and I'm getting encouraging words. 
And that's what we need to, for each other as well, to stay connected personally, uh, not just through the church and our social media programs, but that you stay connected, you know, by phone calls, you've got Zoom, you've got all kinds, of, you've got Skype, you've got so many ways and so much time now in this window that we've been given to really use it to be effective disciples of Christ, but also to confirm, you know, that our purpose and our destiny through the resurrected Christ and the resurrected Christ that lives within us as people that are born again to use those gifts to reach others, the ones that are close to us, friends, neighbors, relatives, and ultimately to reach the world. So point number one again, we are going to be prayer and worship, foundational stuff that we need to be a part of to keep us on that strong foundation, keep us strong and focused and determined, amen? We will then be connected. We'll stay connected through social media, amen? We'll have discipleship, opportunity for Bible school and teachings. We will have a place of proclaiming the gospel beyond the walls, hallelujah. And through your prayer and through your self-discipling, uh, we'll be able to do that corporately and individually serving. We want to be a resource to our community, amen, to those in need, where we can have now this opportunity to really be the church, really be, you know, an example of what it is to be a Christian, what it is an example to be Christ-like, and that will draw, because Jesus says, when you lift me up in your life, I will draw all men unto you. And so, praise God, and then our giving, our giving through our we, as a church, we have our e-transfer, you know, way of giving, and I encourage you to continue to do that when you can. And uh, we'll also have a portal that uh, will be used as well, and we'll have more information on all of this as, you know, the, the days unfold. And uh, in closing, I, I want to say, you know, just stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Uh, stay safe and follow the present regulations, you know, with regards to uh, safe distancing, amen, and uh, stay committed to your daily devotions, hallelujah, stay strong in your closeness to Jesus, stay true to your purpose and your destiny. And so I am just feeling so excited, anticipating what it is that Christ wants to do with us in this window of opportunity. And so we must take this window, we must use this window, with everything that we have, but in order to use it effectively, we personally have to stay strong. And so that once again, your personal devotions. I know we've been, you know, reading every day, um, most of you hopefully, and all of you <laughs> prayerfully, you know, Ephesians chapter three, amen, on who we are in Christ and the blessings of God. Because we are still in the season of my teaching on the blessings of God and how to live the blessed life. And boy, there's no greater opportunity than right now as we go through this time until we are totally reunited as a body. When what a glorious day that will be, amen? And so looking forward to that. But in the meantime, hallelujah, stay committed. Stay true to your purpose and your destiny. And I want us to close this segment. And uh, I can't wait to be with you again. But right now, let us pray as we have reviewed these six points. And we will pray that you will be intricately involved in this process. As a church, we are strong. As a church, when we follow the regulations and the laws that God gives us and the command of scripture, but also the love of God that draws us close and intimate with him. So Father God, we thank you, Lord God, because your purpose and your destiny for us as individuals is to live the blessed life, to live a life that makes a difference, to live a life, Father God, that has integrity and purity and has a deep, deep desire for others, Lord God. But first of all, a great desire for your love, that we take the time, Lord, to draw near to you, then you will thrust us in power and in strength into a community right now that many are really struggling with. There's so much depression, Lord God. There's so much anxiety. There's so much stress. But Father God, we know that as we keep our eyes fixed on you, the author, the finisher 
of our faith, O oh God, we will remain strong as we reach out, O oh God. I love you and I pray God's blessing upon you. I pray his speed, his favor, and above all, his strength and peace to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. How do you loud are you gonna hear my praises roar? Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is. In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises for me Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is in love I raise a hallelujah Just before we sign out, I'd like to talk to you and thank you for those that right now that have tuned in to us and uh, whoever you are and wherever you are. You may be someone who knows God, who's had a relationship with God, or you may be new to this whole experience and uh, maybe right now is a time where you're searching. You're searching for answers, you're searching for truth, you're searching for peace and purpose and let me say to you that the whole resurrection of Jesus Christ was for the purpose that you would have peace. For he declared, my peace be with you. And if you're struggling at this time in any area, you may be feeling uh, dis distressed, you may be feeling anxiety, you, you may be worried about your finances, you may be worried about what's going to happen, how do you reintegrate, how do you, how do you get back on track. For many of you may feel you're off track, you're, you're distanced, you're, you're feeling separated, you're feeling alone. Some of you are really maybe concerned about your own personal health at this time as well. And I just want to say to you that the love of God that he has for you whoever you are, wherever you are. At this moment, God is saying to you, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. And God would say to you, for I came, I sent my son Jesus to the cross that you, yes you, would have life and have it more abundantly. That you would have a purpose in your life that would take you out of a dark situation or the darkness of this world, the pressures of this world and draw you onto himself. For he is a God who loves, and he loves, and he will always love you. He'll never separate himself from you. But God would want you to know him personally. And there is a way. It's, it's not, you know, a religious way. It's not seven steps to knowing God or having a relationship with God. It's a simply a matter of acknowledging that you're in a situation now where you really need a strength, a supernatural strength that goes beyond yourself. And that strength is found only in the living Christ, in a God who cares for you, a God really who wants to have that relationship with you, where he can be with you each day so that you never feel alone. He wants to have that intimacy with you, that you would know he's always near you that you can talk to him about anything. You can go to him with any concerns or any anxiety you're feeling or any pressures that you're under. And you will have a conversation with him that will bring you into a place of strength, a place of encouragement, a place of hope, a place of destiny. And so I encourage you right now that you may never you know, have had this kind of relationship or even thought about it, but maybe right now this is your opportunity to dwell on th that very thing that I've just talked to you about in terms of, yes, there is a God 
a God who loves you, a God who cares for you. You may know God and have drifted. Yes, he is still there. He has ne never departed from you. And he's calling. He's calling you back to himself. And so I would encourage you right now, for those of you that have, have never really thought about having a personal relationship with God, it's done through acknowledging Jesus Christ as Savior of the world and that your desire that he be your personal Savior because he went to the cross for you. He went to the cross for the world that they might know him and have relationship with him. And so if this is a moment where you want to cry out, oh God, God forgive me of my sins. Oh God, I want to have a relationship with you. God, I want to know Jesus. God, I ask you right now to forgive me. Forgive me for being so maybe self-centered or maybe not recognizing, maybe not understanding that I was made for a purpose, a purpose to have a relationship with you above everything else. And in that, I would find the peace. I would find the purpose. I would find the destiny. I would know my call, O oh God. And that is my cry to you, Lord God. Come into my life, I pray. Come, Jesus, take over my life. Jesus, I want to follow you all the days of my life. And so, Lord, I ask you for that right now. I ask you, come into my heart. Jesus, take over my life that I would follow you forever. And folks, if you are, have just prayed that, if you have just spoken that, if that is your deepest desire, then I want to encourage you that you are a child of God. If you have spoken the words and declared that Jesus Christ is God, Jesus Christ is Lord, then I would say to you, I would say to you right now, you have become a child of God, that you are in the presence of God right now. And I want us to pray together at this Easter time, at this resurrection time. God, thank you for loving me the way you do. God, thank you for forgiving me. God, thank you that you've come into my life and I declare that yes, I will follow you. I will follow Jesus. I declare that I am a child of God. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for these that right now, Lord God, that you are speaking to, those that you are calling unto yourself. And I pray during this Easter time that it be the greatest Easter that you've ever experienced, that this would be a true Easter for you, a true resurrection and a new life for you. And I wish you the very best at this Easter time. I pray for you right now. I pray for your families that, Lord God, they would be blessed and they would be kept safe, Lord God, that they would prosper. I pray for mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, children, oh God, that during this time, especially this time and at Easter, Lord God, this would be their time to be fully resurrected as new creations in Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. His favor be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and your children in their children in their children may his presence go before you and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you, He is with you, He is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing, He is for you, 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 He is for you. He is for you, He is for you, oh, Amen, 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 Amen.
Wow, that was amazing. That's our prayer for you guys today here at Living Waters Online. It's been so great to have this technology, to be able to connect with you guys and, you know, just to bring, you know, what God is trying to say through us in this time to you and to your families and to your home. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did today and I hope you've been encouraged. And so, you know, I just want to thank all of you that continue in your giving. It's, it's just awesome. And especially in the times right now of uncertainty and things that you're going through. But I just want to thank you guys that continue to send your tithes and your offerings. And, you know, if you'd like to be a part of that, if you'd like to be a part of giving to Living Waters, we have all the information up here on the screen that you can just, you know, support um, what we're doing here. And, you know, you can connect with us online also. And you can see more about who we are as Living Waters and what we do in the city. And so we really appreciate you. We appreciate you guys for tuning in with us today. It's been an amazing time. And we look forward to the more that's coming because we have things coming up for you. As Pastor Sid said, we are gonna have prayer initiatives coming up. We're gonna be having Sunday services for you guys. So we're really excited to be able to do that. So we love you guys. We bless you guys. And we hope you guys have a fantastic Easter wherever you are, whether you're alone today, whether you're with your family, whether you're just two or how many you are. But we pray for you. We pray for you every day. And we hope that you'll tune in next time. Thank you.